Shalom, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahusha, by Hashem Rechach Adash I want to give double honor to all the elders and apostles of Great Meal Song. Strong Shalom to the Aki out here pushing his work in truth and sincerity, making their calling and their election sure. I want to um, get right into it. Hopefully, this is edifying. Give thanks to the Father and our older brother once again for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. We're going to go into wise words, you know, wise sayings, uh, wise sayings, right? You know, I might do a, a three to four part uh, series on this, man, because, you know, these wise sayings can help you out a lot. It can comfort you a lot, right? You know, by reading over Proverbs and reading over the Book of Wisdom, I like to call it, you know, Ecclesiastes and Ecclesiastes Gush. You know, those are the books of wisdom, you understand, that I like to classify under, you know, Proverbs also classify under the books of wisdom too as well, wise words, right, that I give you information that you would have never thought about or you would have never known if you haven't read Ecclesiasticus or Syrac or, you know, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes or Proverbs. So we're going to get into some Proverbs real quick, you know, read over some Proverbs and, you know, uh, shine light on some of them and then we're going to keep it moving, man. Hopefully this is edifying once again, right, with these wise words. Um, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, right? So Solomon the, is the king of Israel at this time, right? He's the son of David. These are his proverbs or his wise sayings. Let's, let's look up the word proverb real quick. Let's look up the word proverb. Another word proverb. A short, pithy saying in general use, stating the general truth or piece of advice, right? Right? Uh, stating a general truth or piece of advice. You know? Let's uh let's get it in a blue letter now. Yep, the same thing, you know. Hence, a byword like a, a, a proverb, a parable, you know, a dark saying, you know, wise saying, uh, sensitive of uh, ethical wisdom, you know, uh, a similitude, a parable, you know. Uh, that's what it is, man. You know, a wise saying, right? Something that was passed down throughout generations, man, you know, to Israel, to Yasharala, right? We are part of that generation. We are part of Solomon's generation, part of David's generation. We are the Israelites, right? You understand? So these are our parables, our Proverbs, right? Over here in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. You know, these are our Proverbs because it was passed, it was passed down, you understand, throughout our generations. This is our heritage. This is our nationality. You know what I'm saying? This is our nationality. King Solomon, King David, they're from the tribe of Judah. So-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanic. Y'all are part of Israel. But who are who from Judah specifically? The so-called Negroes. The so-called African Americans. They are from Judah. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14, let you know that our Lord, Yahweh sprang out of Judah. So these are our brothers and lost cousins and aunties and uncles, man. You know? These are our brothers. Solomon is a brother, man, from Judah. You know? 
So we have to understand that these wise sayings that we're about to go into only fits Yasharala. It's, it's from our ancestry, right? You know, you got Ancestry.com, and you can go back and track your lineage. Well, the scriptures, the Bible, these proverbs, our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, this is our ancestry. This is how we connect to our people. This is how we connect ultimately to our power, man, you know? So let's get into it, man. The uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, man, king of Israel. You know, verse 2, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, Verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. Verse 4, to give sub, uh, subtlety, subtlety so like, yeah, to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, right? To the young man, knowledge and discretion. So he's going to give you uh, the actual answer to this. This is how you do all of these things that is being mentioned. We're going to read it. Uh, you're going to continue reading. It's going to be able to tell you how you're, how will you be able to do all these things, how you're going to be able to do all these things. So, um, verse 5, it says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel, right? So a man of understanding shall attain to wise counsel. You shall not follow um, the masses to destruction, man. You, you will be following the wise, man. Your spirit will bear witness with you. Uh, true wisdom and um, true understanding, right? You'll want to stay and be planted in that truth like a tree flowing with, flowing with, you know, branches and leaves and flourishing, man. You know, you want to be planted in these, like a, uh, you want to be planted in these living waters, man. You know, continuing on, verse 6, it says, to understand a proverb, a wise man, right, and the interpretation, the wise words, I mean, so like at the words of the wise and their dark sayings, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning, beginning of knowledge, but the fools despise wisdom and instruction. So he gave you the answer right there, you know, to obtain all of these things, to be able to, you know, receive wisdom, judgment, you understand, and justice, to be able to, you know, give subtlety to the simple, you know, to be able to give discretion to the young man, you know, to be able to, in order to be able to increase in learning, in order to do all of that, understand a parable, understand a proverb, in order to do all of that, you got to first start off by fearing the Lord. You understand? you got to first start off by fearing the Lord. You can't get past that. A lot of people don't know the Lord. A lot of people think the Lord is just hugs and kisses and he just there at your beck and call and you get to ask him whatever you want and you don't have to do nothing for him. You know, that's what that's a, that's a lot of people. Like to call on the Lord, but don't do shit he say. You know, but you gotta also you gotta start off by fearing the Lord. Ultimately, that's how you get the wisdom. That's how you'll be able to teach the people. That's how you use the dark sayings, the parables to teach, teach the people. That's how you use the proverbs to teach the people. The curses over in Deuteronomy to teach the people. You gotta start off by fearing the Lord. You gotta have that healthy fear of the Lord, man. You don't supposed to be fearing nothing out here but the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the first step in order to be accepted of Him. Don't take my word for it. I'm going to bring it out, man. You know, I'm going to bring it out. Sirach, right? One of my favorite precepts, man. Sirach, chapter 19. We can start at verse 18. It says, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtaineth his love, right? So if you want wisdom... You gotta obtain the Lord's love. You gotta do what the Lord said. You gotta fear the Lord first, in order to be accepted of Him, and in order to receive wisdom, and in order to receive instruction, in order to teach anything. You gotta fear the Lord if you wanna succeed in this walk, man. You gotta have that fear. You know, that'll stop you from doing a lot of shit if you fear the Lord. You know. You won't hate your brother if you fear the Lord. You won't go out into the streets and shoot nobody and kill nobody if you fear the Lord. You know? You won't sell drugs to your people if you fear the Lord. You won't do a lot of things if you fear the Lord. That's what's happening to our people right now. We lost that fear of our power. But he's putting it back into us now, man. As we speak, he's building up the tabernacles of David that was falling, man. The ruins of David, man. 
You know, he's building that up. He's building up the temple. You understand? But at this moment in time, our people, majority of our people, do not even know their power, don't fear their power. That's why they're able to convince their own minds to go out into the streets and do all these abominable acts because they don't fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the first step in order to be accepted of him. You got to do what's required of you, Yasharala. You want to say you got to do what's required. And let's get it. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what do the Lord thy God require thee of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, there it is, in order to be accepted of the Lord, the first step is to fear him. So that's why he mentioned it here. You know, verse 12. And now Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 13, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good, man. This is only for your good, Yasharala. This is only for your good. It's not for your bad. The Lord loves you. Why would he, why would he tell you to do things that, that will make you die, man? Because we know that the wages of sin is death, man. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the, this is the book of the law. So like if this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success, right? This is for your good, right? If you meditate in these scriptures day and night, you don't have to worry about all these other things, right? You're seeking for the kingdom of heaven first. And you know all things will be provided unto you, Yasharala. You know? So these are wise things. We gotta fear the Lord, man. You gotta fear the Lord in order to obtain his wisdom. In order to in order to abstain uh in order to obtain wisdom, in order to obtain uh understanding, you have to fear the Lord, man. If you wanna understand dark sayings and things like that, it starts by fearing the Lord because we know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. And let's get that, man. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Back in the same chapter, I wanted to continue out. Ecclesiastes, I mean, Ecclesiasticus or, Ecclesi uh, or Syrac, you understand? I'm going to start at verse 18 again. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtains his love. So like this. Verse 19, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, and they that do these things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. So if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, do what? Keep the commandments, man. Keep the commandments. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Keep the commandments. Keep the laws. You know what I'm saying? Keep the statutes. You know what I'm saying? Keep the faith. You know, do what the Lord told you to do. Do what's required of you, Yasharala. That's it. If you want to understand why he's saying it, if you want to get that crown of life do what's required of you, man. Verse 20, it says, The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all the wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. You got to fear the Lord, man. That's all wisdom. You got to fear the Lord. Verse 24, He that hath small understanding and fear of God is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresses the law of the Most High, man. You know, the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. You know? And that's how you will understand these proverbs that I was going into, that I'm going into now. That I went into, you know, before reading about King Solomon and things like that. But I'm going back into it, you know. In order to know wisdom instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, in order to do all of that, first off, you got to fear the Lord. And these are, this is a wise talk, right? A wise saying. Going into proverbs, man. You know, verse 8, it says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father. And forsake not the law of thy mother, man. You understand? Don't forsake the law of your mother. Don't forsake wisdom. You understand? Wisdom is a nurturing spirit. Don't forsake your father, which is Yahweh, man. Don't forsake your father, which is Yahweh, or wisdom, which will be your spiritual mother. But you got ears to hear. Look at wisdom as what? As your kinswoman and understanding as, as your sister, right? You know? I like the scripture says, I'm uh, roughly paraphrasing. You know, you're supposed to look at wisdom as your kinswoman and understanding as your as your uh as your sister. So 
wisdom is a nurturing spirit. You know, understanding is a nurturing spirit. But your father tells you these commandments for your good. For, so you can understand wisdom. So the other nations, too, as well, can do what? Can call you a wise and understanding people, too, as well. Let's get that. Deuteronomy in chapter um, 4. If we can start at verse uh, 5, it says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land with the ego to possess it. Right? Verse 6, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this nation is a wise and understanding people. So just because we disobeyed our heritage, our nationality, our wisdom and our understanding, our power, we are now called bywords in the streets, man. We are now called niggas and porch monkeys and spicks and a dumb people, man. Can't read and they found us in the jungle, man. All of that bullshit, man. Our people are the wisest people on earth if we are linked into our power, man. That's why these wise sayings, man, you got to read over them. You got to read over the wise sayings. You got to read over the scriptures entirely. Study to show yourself approved. Because by you studying to show yourself approved, you also keep it that candle burning. You also keep it that, you know, that candle burning. You know, you keep it that candle burning, and you ain't, you, you know, you're not altering left and right. You know what I'm saying? You're not being tossed to and fro. You stand firm in what you believe in, man. You know what I'm saying? You stand in this truth. You know, your candle is burning, and the Lord is not taking that fire away from you, which will represent what? Your spirit. You got to keep that wisdom, man. Keep that wisdom and that understanding. And these nations are also ultimately, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, will uh, acknowledge us as a wise people again. All we have to do is turn back to our power, man. You know? Uh, Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 8. Once again, it says, My son... Give the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, right? Forsake not the law of thy mother. Verse 9, it says, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck, right? So these scriptures supposed to be a what? An ornament of grace upon our head, and chains upon our neck, like thick gold chains, like Jake, you want the rock. That's how the commandments and the law are supposed to be on us. This is how we supposed to be, you know what I'm saying, represented. You know what I'm saying? Like Jake likes to say, oh, I'm represented. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm cool if I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. You know, this is how we supposed to be chilling, if you will. You know, with the gold on, you know what I'm saying, with the ornament on our heads. You know how we like to rock the caps and shit, man. This, this supposed to be a Mitchell and Ness. You know what I'm saying? This, these scriptures are greater than a Mitchell and Ness, man. You know? You know? These scriptures way greater than a mission on us, way greater than way greater than a, a gold crown, man. Forsake not wisdom, Yasharal, it's well within your truth, man. Because it's only yours. It's not no other nation. It's yours. Stop trying to give it to other people. It's yours, man. You're stuck with it. And it's and it's great to be stuck with this, man. I'm honored to be stuck with this. This is a powerful heritage. This is a heritage like no other, man. You know? Verse 10, it says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not, right? Don't don't walk into don't walk in and and sit in the multitude of the ungodly, man. You know, don't let them convince you to go off. You know, if this is how I do it in life, I limit the people I deal with, man. If I'm not at camp, I'm at work. If I'm not at work, I'm in the house. <laughs> Shit. I don't got to deal with people like that, man. And I choose not to because that eliminates, if you if you choose not to, that eliminates a lot of problems. You don't have to be enticed by sinners if you limit the people that you deal with. I only deal with my camp brothers. I deal with my wife, my daughter, my family, intermediate family. That's it. You're not going to catch me out if I'm not at camp or if I'm not at work, right? You got to do things that is necessary to to uh, to prevent yourself from going off, to prevent to prevent yourself 
from being enticed, man. Come on, man, we got to do this, Yasharala. It's almost that time, man. You know, it's almost that time. You know, verse 11 says, if they say, come with us, let us lie, wait for blood, let us lurk privately, uh, privily for the innocent without cause. Verse 12, let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down in the pit. Verse 13, we shall find a precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Verse 14, cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. You know, verse 15, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, right? So this is them saying, let's go take advantage, you know what I'm saying, of the poor. You know what I'm saying? Let us, let us wait for the innocent. You know, let us uh, take advantage of them. This is what Esau is saying, and this is what our people are saying too as well. The ones that want to be rich in his kingdom off of, uh, you know, doing wicked, abominable acts. This is what they're doing, man, persecuting the poor. You know, persecuting the innocent, persecuting Yasharala. Because 90% of the time, if they are poor, if they are innocent, it's Yasharala, man. It's Yasharala that's being persecuted. No matter what ghetto you go to in the world, it's Yasharala being persecuted, man. And that shit should make you mad. These people's minds are privately set to destroy the poor. Like, what the fuck is that, man? You got all you need in life. What do you need with the poor being downtrodden and, and and spoiled, man, so you can take everybody's riches. Like, what what's with that, man? That's why the Lord got to destroy the wicked and burn up two-thirds of our people, you understand, so he can get his point across that this shit don't make sense. Our ways are unequal, and the Lord's way is weak. It's equal, you understand? It's not. I, was gonna, I don't know why I said I was going to start saying weekle, but that is not a word. I don't know what's going on, man. Can't talk right now for some reason. But our ways are not equal. The Lord way is equal, man. You know? You understand? He said don't walk in their way. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. What's that, Psalms 1 and 1? You know? We got to do what the Lord said, man, and dwell with these wise sayings. Dwell within his wisdom, man. You know? And hopefully this was edifying, Yasharala. I want to end it by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah, by Hashem Wakak Hadash Yam. The water to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah for placing this on me to do this lesson. I want to give all honor and glory once again to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah for giving me oxygen in my lungs today, for giving my people that are alive that hear my voice oxygen in their lungs today. You understand? Let's keep it moving, Yasharala. Stay strong, stay firm in this truth. Strong shalom to y'all, man. Shalom on to the next one.